So uh, a difference between part one and part two, by the way, I think, yeah, it uh, kind of tells you the, what chapters they mostly come from. So part two is usually going to have something that relates to heat engines. Part one may not. So with the part two, I, I've done a little bit of uh, dice loading so that um, one question that you have seen me do in the past, I know I'm not going to get that question. I, um, I, I, I kind of picked at the question that's uh, been uh, scheduled to go in and I made sure it wasn't the question I had before. <laughs> so let me start. I still only have uh, 20 minutes and it's actually not a lot of time uh, if I don't. Uh, I'm not efficient in working through this. I can easily uh, run out of time. <laughs> so make sure you also wait. Yeah, and, and I think it does say uh, attach. I wonder if I add work. Oh, wow. This is, uh, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is why I shouldn't look at student work ahead of time. I'm pretty sure it hasn't recorded an attempt for me yet. So right now I have a, a time-free access to just to look at the question with all the time I want before ever having to um, spend any of my time, or I'm pretty sure. Because uh, when I go back, so let me just refresh and start the attempt. I'm pretty sure it'll just give me full 20 minutes. I got to file a bug report. <laughs> let me just start. I'll deal with the bug report later. And I should have yeah full 20 minutes, I think. Um, so let me just answer this properly, and then we'll um, end this portion of the demo. So it says, consider the thermodynamic processes shown on the figure below. This is the PV diagram. Uh, denoted, yeah, okay. So I have these two parameters that are, I think, assumed to be known. Processes shown are for a monatomic ideal gas, okay. So monatomic means, it means a few things. One particular thing, degree of freedom, is three three translational degree of freedom. Okay. And image description, this is, um, it shouldn't give you any more info than what you see visually. It's an accessibility feature. Okay, for the process taking uh, the path from C to B. Okay, uh, C to B and then to A, okay. Calculate the following. Work done by the system change in internal energy and that it flow up. So this is, uh, um, it's almost, uh, there's a kind of a standard strategy vibe to this thing. Because uh, there's a systematic way to approach this kind of PV diagram involved uh, analysis questions. I will tell you some of the things that you should remember. You should remember the definition of work. Work is defined as, um, so in a, well, defined as this, pressure as a function of volume integrated with respect to value uh, from some initial to final state. In a simplest scenarios where you have constant pressure process, you might express this as pressure times a change in volume. This is one. And the um, other expression that you will use often is the first law of thermodynamics, which says the change of internal energy is the net heat transfer minus work done. And uh, if this minus sign confuses you, just remember that physics convention is different from uh, chemistry convention. Whenever we describe work, we're talking about work done by gas on system. So work done takes work, uh, takes energy out of the system you're working with. Um, and finally, you might have an um, so, it, so this becomes important because this comes into the expression for change of internal energy. Uh, change of internal energy is the degree of freedom. So in this case, 3 over 2, the number of particles times Boltzmann constant times the change of temperature. Or actually, I don't even need this change part. Internal energy is this if T is in kelvins. So as you look at these three equations, um, you can kind of tell which one is useful for what. This is useful for calculating work. This is useful for calculating internal energy. And this first law, it's often useful for calculating the heat because there's no other formula for heat. And uh, finally, one final expression that you might be using is the ideal gas law. Pressure times the volume is equal to and KBT. Here, the utility of the ideal gas law especially comes in because when you look at the question, it never gave you like a temperature. 
Um, but internal energy is expressed in terms of temperature. You don't have temperature, what do you do? Well, you have this. So you, this NKBT, you can re-express it in terms, of, in terms of pressure and volume. So it would be like a three halves times pressure times volume. So, um, so these are the common, uh, these are the tools in your toolbox that you should keep in mind as you work through question like this. So I'm gonna go through step by step, you know. Um, so let me draw the path for CBA so that I have something to kind of look at and have an intuitive feel for. So this is my pressure volume, C, B, A. Okay, so for my work done, this is basically going to be the area under the curve, area under this curve. So this will be my um, work done. And that I can do it geometrically. I see this rectangle of high 2P naught uh, with V naught. So this is going to be 2P naught times, oops, times uh, V naught. Um, that's the area under the curve, which will give me the work done. And it's positive because it's positive area. I'm going from left to right. Change in total internal energy. So, um, so if I'm looking for change, I'm looking for three halves times change of pressure times volume. I think I can calculate that. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, yeah, I, I can do it on, on the calculator, in fact. So uh, let me have three halves first. And then I'm going to have the final pressure times final volume, which should be 2 p naught times 2 v naught, so 4 times p naught times v naught, minus the initial pressure and volume, p naught times v naught, p naught times v naught. And I don't think it really simplifies from here anyway. So that's change in energy. And for um, net heat transfer, what I do is I solve this uh, first law equation for, can I do this on the right? Yeah, let me solve this for net heat. It's going to be change in internal energy plus the work done. So I have both of them up here, so just to add them together. Copy this. And I'm doing this in a lazy way. I mean, so, you know, sometimes there are well, expressions where if you try to simplify, you get something beautiful. Um, here, I to the way the system grades this, they grade it by numerical equivalence. They, they plug in some net random numbers into these variables and see if the number you get is the same. So if you have a complicated expression, doesn't matter because the way system evaluates it, it doesn't take complexity of the expression into account. Just checking the time, okay. Got 30 minutes left. So each of the calcul quantities above may be positive or negative depending on the process. Briefly describe your work, what does science mean for, okay. So for work, uh, positive means work done by the system on the surrounding. Negative means work done by the surrounding on the system. Uh, delta E, uh, positive means increasing internal energy, temperature. Uh, negative means decreasing internal energy. Uh, it's fine without that. Uh, Q, uh, heat, net heat transfer, positive means a net heat transfer into the system. Negative means net heat transfer out of the system into the surrounding. I think that's all it's looking for. So, okay, those are the answers. Um, and the, for the process, taking the path from uh, C to A along the path uh, C, C to A, okay. Uh, so let me just copy that over so that I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. So, um, so I'm working on B, I mean C, um, in the PV diagram. I have these vortices. Oh, I didn't draw it right, that's fine. Um, so C to A, directly connecting. Assume that the work done is the three quarters of the work done that we calculated above, which was um, that. Um, so let me just write that down. So what the question is telling us we can assume 
is that assume that this area for the work done is three quarters of that. So uh, three half P naught V naught. Okay, in the process, yeah, calculate the following change in the internal energy. Ah, that that's exactly the same. They don't change because uh, um, internal energy is a state function. What state function means is as long as your endpoints are the same, nothing's changed. Um, so as much as I, the phrase state function bothers me, it shouldn't really bother me so much because it is a useful problem solving tool. So for the net heat transfer, I'm actually using the exact same expression we derived above. In change in internal energy, which didn't change, plus the work done, which is now different. So now I use that different amount of work done for the change for the heat transfer. So the amount of heat transfer is different because um, the the because both the work done and heat transfer are path dependent. They are not state functions. So uh, find the path from state A to state C that minimizes the heat flow out of the gas. Explain the space below. How uh, this path minimizes the heat flow, and if possible, calculate the amount of this minimize the heat flow. Okay, um, so you can answer it a couple different ways. How much? I have ten minutes. Okay, so I have some time to waste. <laughs> so let me uh, explain it this way. Um, label B and D. So um, I'll just type it out. My thought process. So if we are limited to the path shown. Then the path that minimizes, yeah, yeah, A to C minimizes the heat flow is one that minimizes uh, absolute value of work done um, because because the net heat flow is equal to change in the internal energy plus work done. Um, Plus work done. Um, wait, let me just think of this through. Heat flow is the one that minimizes. Um, so work is gonna, so going from here to here, work will be done on the system. So W will be negative. Um, if a W is negative, I don't know if I want to minimize. Uh, let me think of this through. So because this is that. To one that maximizes um, the the one that um, one that makes uh, W as negative as possible is that right? Huh? Because mm. I had a different. Um, process in mind. You flow out of the gas. No, no, no. I, I, no I'm confusing myself here, because um, the one that makes uh, no as small as possible. Because. Because um, QNET. Which can be confusing, um, or in terms of absolute valued quantities, it's going to be minus absolute value of QNet because it will be heat flow out. So the QNet will be a negative quantity. That is equal to delta E internal, which will be negative quantity. So it will be absolute value of this, that. And then the work done will be also negative, so it'll be minus work done. So if you are looking at in terms of what's the absolute value of heat transfer, it's going to be absolute value of heat transfer will be, yeah, okay, delta E int plus uh, absolute value of W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My intuition was telling me what I was saying before was just not right. So, uh, so this portion you can change. As long as your endpoints are the same, this is not going to change. So the only part you can change is the amount of work done. So how small can you make this to be? Well, um, so this is where it kind of depends on your um, creativity. So, um, so, so let me actually reword this. So let me start with this. 
the path that minimizes heat flow is one that makes that as much as possible. Um, this. Um, so how small can we make this? Uh, uh, which will make this uh, smaller. Um, it, it, how can, small can we make the absolute value of the work, which will make the absolute value of heat transfer smaller? Uh, so this is where if we are restricted to the path shown, then it should be A to D to C. Because this will minimize the area under the area under the curve to this, which is the minimum you could have with the path as shown, um, um, so to um, in order to minimize minimize the area under the curve. And uh, you could do this: uh, calculate the amount of uh, uh, this minimize the heat flow. Totally fine. You can go ahead and do it. Um, and this has been kind of an open-ended question. You can also answer with a little bit of creativity, which um, could be something like this. Um, if we are not restricted to the path shown, then um, theoretically, it's possible to make absolute value of W0, uh, mathematically the smallest smallest value possible for an um, absolute uh, value. Um, to do this from A, we would uh, go all the way down to zero pressure um, at temperature equals zero Kelvin. And at this uh, zero pressure, we would change the volume from V0 to, to V0 doing no work. And at the volume of V0, uh, we raise the pressure up to P0 uh, at a finite non zero temperature. And uh, there's a so you know there's a heat transfer out here, nothing of any kind here. Heat transfer in as you go back up to C, up to P naught uh, at the point to C. Uh, this path uh, minimizes uh, work to zero, so it minimizes net heat transfer to basically what you must have uh, change in the internal energy yeah so that's another answer i uh, i don't know if i mentioned this in model answer or not it's it's sometimes it, I, I don't know and it, it the question didn't specify that the path minimize that minimizes heat flow must be one that's shown so yeah. so okay with that uh, i have three minutes so let me use the time to attach my work and then we'll submit an end and uh, again, uh, my recommendation for you is to uh, take some time to organize your work. Um, uh, don't try to do it within the time limit. There's no extra price for doing it within the time limit. Uh, the system does timestamp what you submit. So um, I guess the only thing where I would hang up is if, uh, you know, after I've graded it, then people change their work, like don't do that annoying <laughs> um, but otherwise uh, I don't really care too much about at what time your work was uh, submitted or last changed okay let me submit it then so here I should still get some points from these if uh, I, what I entered is right and I think what I entered is right yeah <laughs> let's hope <laughs> um, submit an end uh, yeah I already attached the work but you can also do it here after time limit has run out. Okay, I've got some points. So uh, how many boxes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so I should have gotten one, two, three, four, five, five out of seven. Let's see. I'm just curious. Did I get five out of seven? 
yeah, yeah, I got five out of seven. Good. So all the expressions I entered are correct. And um, these, so, you know, after you submit, uh, after the due date, you will have access to the answer, answer key. You can kind of take a look, see what you got, see what you missed. And um, after some time, we'll also have the group review of timed assessments. That's coming up in like week seven, week eight. Uh, we don't have one right after the thermodynamics, but we'll schedule one after the electrostatics. And if you want to include your thermodynamics work there, you're welcome to.